Hey, everybody. How are you doing? All right. It is time to continue our story about the pig that's trying to get out. Well, she already actually did get out, but she's back at the farm. The Adventures of a South Pole Pig by Chris Kurtz, Chapter 9. That afternoon, while the men worked to repair Nessie's stall door, Flora thought up a plan to get Mother back. She would ask Nessie to come over and break down the fence. Luna could take her the message. As Flora gave this plan some more thought, she sorted through the leftovers in the slop trough and found four corn cobs with the good stuff all chewed off. Gather around, everyone, she called. I've got a new game called Feeling Kicky. She and her brothers were going to get strong. Then if Nessie wasn't willing or able, maybe they could break down the fence themselves. Here's what you do, Flora announced. Toss the cob as high as you can, like this. She took the corn cob in her mouth and jerked it into the air. Then you run to the fence, turn and kick it really hard. Run back and try to stomp the cob before it stops rolling. She glanced at Alfred. For the first time since mother had been taken away, he looked a little happy. I'll go first. She tossed the corn cob and dashed over to the fence. She spun around and reared up on her front legs as her back hooves flashed out behind her. Tap, tap. They clicked against the fence. She was hoping for a louder, thumpier sound. But she tore back to the cob that was still rolling and jumped on it with her front hooves. There, like that. Flora spun again and then looked around at her brothers while she caught her breath. Wow, Alfred said. They all lined up behind the corn cobs to take a turn. Her brothers cheered one another, especially when the moment came to bang their little hooves into the fence. They played feeling kicky the rest of the afternoon. The next morning, Flora got up before everyone else. She walked to the fence, stood for a moment, then spun quickly and kicked. It might have been her imagination, but it felt as if the boards trembled a little. She wished she could show Luna. She ran up the manure pile to see if her friend was anywhere around. Instead, she saw a big truck backing down the gravel road. It came to a stop in a cloud of dust just on the other side of the junk heap and the wind brought the smell of exhaust. One by one, her brothers woke and wandered over, peeking with their sleepy eyes between boards. It wasn't until the engine suddenly quieted that Flora heard the dogs. It sounded like hundreds of them, barking and whining from inside the back of the truck, which was covered by a stained, greasy canvas. Two strangers and a man with, dark, with a dark beard came around the corner of the truck and strode purposefully toward the pig pen. What was this? Flora could hardly believe. Don't let them catch you, Mother called from her pen. Stick together and dash from corner to corner. Flora looked at Alfred. Alfred hurried over and glued himself to Flora's side. She nuzzled him for encouragement. Get ready, she whispered. Two of the men stepped over the fence and into the pen. They lunged and grabbed as Flora and her brothers ran to the farthest corner and jammed themselves into a tight bunch. As soon as the men came close, they ran again, grunting and squealing to the next corner. That's it, cried Mother. She was standing and looked over, looking over the top of the gate. She sounded frantic. Stay together, children. Was that why they moved her out of the pen, Flora wondered, so she couldn't protect her children? The gate between the two pens shuddered. It was Mother throwing herself against the boards. Don't let them put their hands on you, she shouted. Don't let them pick you up. The third man lunged at Flora. She jumped sideways to dodge her hand, his hands. Even though she was the smallest pig now, she was faster than her brothers. Her strong back legs powered her forward through the gap between his legs. She glanced around. The man with the beard fell on Alfred. No! Flora shouted. 
She dashed over, aimed for that man's head, spun and kicked backwards. Oh, hey, it's you again, he said. She could tell she missed his head, but the man let Alfred go. The three men dusted themselves off. Flora's mother was still shouting encouragement, but Flora's attention suddenly slipped. The dogs in the truck had kept up their barking. Were they the same dogs from the day in the cornfield? They sounded similarly excited, but happy too, as though they were finally off on the adventure they had been training for. Adventure! Did she dare? This time, when the men slowly advanced with their hands out in front, Flora only pretended to scramble. She darted one way and then turned back. Her brothers, including Alfred, all made a break for the other side of the pen. But Flora stood her ground. Flora, run, cried her mother. Get that one, the man with the beard shouted. She's nothing but trouble. The men closed in on three from three sides, and Flora stamped her front feet. She kicked one of her back legs, but she did not run. And when they fell on her and picked her up, she did not struggle. Flora, Alfred squealed. Goodbye, she shouted. Don't worry about me, Alfred. Work hard on your kicking. The men hoisted Flora out of the pen. The truck growled. Dark smoke leaped from a rat rattling pipe. Flora shivered. You've got yourself a good one there, she heard the man with the beard say. The rest of his words were drowned out as a flap in the dark canvas was f as the drowned out as a flap in the dark canvas was flipped up and Flora was shoved into a wood and wire crate. <gasps> Flora was captured. Oh no! What's gonna happen next, guys? Chapter 10. Ah, oh, that's scary. She tried to get away, but she couldn't. What's gonna happen? She's in a wood crate now! Let's think about what's gonna happen next. Hmm. All right! I'll see you tomorrow for the next chapter. Chapter 10! Woo! Have a great day!